Welcome to our five on five. Please be joined in studio today by U.S. Senator Ron Wyden. Senator, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me again. So I want to start with uh, the president of the United States taking executive action last week to pardon federal marijuana possession charges and order federal agencies to look at potentially descheduling the drug. Do you think cannabis should be a Schedule One drug? First of all, this is a major step in the right direction to uh, move away from this whole reefer madness. And the net effect of what the president has done is very much along the lines of the legislation that I've proposed with the, with the leadership. And that is to move us to the point where marijuana would essentially be held uh, in a similar way as alcohol. And in effect, the states would be given a very wide berth to make decisions that they believe are best for their residents. We're recording this on Saturday. It's airing on Monday. The president coming to Oregon this coming weekend, the 14th and 15th to be exact. Is there anything you can share with us about his visit? Well, we'll wait for a, an official announcement from the president, but we're particularly uh, hoping there'll be a good uh, discussion of holding down health care costs. This is right up at the top of what Oregonians are talking about. I have opened all town hall meetings uh, in every county every year. I was pleased that you all brought it up at the debate. And we always hear about uh, seniors getting mugged uh, by the cost of prescriptions. We're now going to have Medicare negotiating to hold down the price of medicine. We're going to have a cap on uh, insulin. We've got some good Medicaid uh, reforms. I really uh, hope that the president will dig into the effort uh, here at home to cut health care costs. Speaking about the president and these big picture issues, I want to ask you about Ukraine and Russia right now. How concerned are you about the increasing desperation of Vladimir Putin? Well, I'm on the Intelligence Committee, so I don't get into classified uh, matters, but certainly all of this uh, talk that Putin engages in with respect to tactical nuclear weapons is very troubling. You know, the history of these weapons, and again, I'm not getting into things that are classified, is, you know, people say, well, it can be contained, it can be this, it can be that. We just don't want to go there. Well, this weekend you toured a White City affordable housing complex. How are tax credits helping build more affordable housing here in Southern? Well, first I want Southern Oregonians to know the bottom line uh, with respect to housing. You know, Democrats aren't usually supposed to use this word, but I'm a supply sider on housing. We need to create more supply. And uh, in particular, I talked about low income housing tax credits. That's been widely used in Jackson County. And I want to do more for middle uh, income families, particularly say a cop uh, and uh, a firefighter and a nurse, you know, they can't dream of uh, uh, home ownership and I'm gonna propose middle income uh, tax credits for them. Okay, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. We'll have much more with Senator Wyden in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with U.S. Senator Ron Wyden in studio. Senator, we're, we're talking about some new money coming into the region, uh, I believe, for tribes. What can you share with our viewers about that? Here, here's what's ahead. I think folks uh, at home know I wrote the Secure Rural Schools Bill. It brought us about $3.5 billion. It's been hugely important for roads and schools and, and infrastructure, and yet there's still a huge amount of, uh, of hurt in Southern Oregon and in rural communities. And as part of the Recovery Act back in spring of 2021, I got the local assistance and tribal uh, assistance aid included. And what's going to come over a two year period is $12 million uh, to Klamath, $5 million to Josephine, four million, a little over four million to Jackson. And I think it's gonna be a big shot in the arm for the economy and particularly for strengthening infrastructure, making our power lines, for example, more uh, resilient. Mm. Uh, speaking of that, as, as you likely noticed, it's nearly mid-October and as you've probably seen, pretty warm out there. Uh, it's, it's still very much fire season. Uh, do we have enough federal firefighters uh, or, or are you concerned about that as the season's kind of winding down, if you will? I, I do believe we need more uh, firefighters and certainly folks in this area do. I, you know, go to all the Fred Myers when uh, I'm in rural Oregon, a firefighter came up to me, said, Ron, thank you for helping to professionalize uh, uh, the field, get higher wages for the firefighters, but we very much need, need more. I'm using my seat on the Senate Budget Committee to secure uh, uh, additional pay for firefighters. Senator Merkley has joined me in this as well. You're the chair of the Senate Finance Committee. What are you doing in, in that role to expand our mental health workforce? I consider this right up at the top of the priority list for our state. Oregonians know my brother was schizophrenic. The Wyden family went uh, to bed every single night for years on end, 
worried that my brother would hurt himself or someone else. Uh, I'm particularly interested in increasing the mental health workforce. And we had some good news recently when Connie and Steve Ballmer, he of course with uh, Bill Gates and Microsoft is well known, Connie, I'm pleased to say, is a duck, as am I, and they uh, are very generous philanthropically and gave substantial sums to the University of Oregon to create a degree in behavioral mental health, which is going to be enormously important. I'm going to take that program like I did the alliance between mental health and police in cahoots and try to fold it into a model for the federal government, particularly using Medicaid. You and Senator Merkley are urging the Bureau of Reclamation to deliver drought relief funds to Oregon through the Inflation Reduction Act. $4 billion is allocated for Western drought relief. What can Klamath Basin farmers expect from this, and when will they see a piece of that? We're trying to get it to those farmers as quickly as possible. You're absolutely right. It has been warm over the last uh, a few weeks. Uh, these, uh, these fires, these are not your grandfather's fires. They're bigger and they're hotter and they're... Uh, more powerful and what we need to do is get help uh, uh, to the farmers. It's essentially uh, key to their livelihood, but it's also key to our safety. Senator, thank you so much for taking the time. We're Let's here do it again. It. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.